experiences. I've done stupid things. I will yes. not put that on on here. Yes. Um, I don't regret it because it's mm. made me who I am today. And I feel like maybe mm. if I chose a different path or different decisions, I could be somewhere else. I could not be in the military. I could be dead. I could not have mm. met my wife. It's like the flash, like you don't mess with the timeline. So you're just funny. It's you're funny. You know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. Come here, come here, though. Yeah, he's crazy, Dick. Eh? Who are you? We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Are you ready? Just give me a quick little intro. A little intro. Well, hey, hey, my name's Jaime. My hey, name's Tony, my, and um, my name's Tony, and this is the other end of the Tony. So we're TNT. We're dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> dynamite. Yeah, I don't I'm know. Like, I don't know if the world's ready for this. No, probably not. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, dude, uh, what is going on? We're recording, by the way. We're in it. All right. Well, yeah, I see it down now. I'm like, oh, recording. Mm, okay. Yeah. They look um, stupid. Just coming yeah. off of of. Uh, working so i may have the uh foul sailor voice so i apologize to the viewers <laughs> oh you're good and then for people that don't know so what do you do uh i am a united states navy sailor going hey, on about 15 about 15 yeah 15 in march yeah that's wild and where are you stationed at I'm in Washington right now, nice. um, and then I'm waiting on my orders to go back to San Diego to a new ship. So just waiting on that to transfer, hopefully in January. Nice. And then, yeah. so are you hanging out for the holidays with with the wife? Uh, stuff or no? Yeah, I'll be I'll be going down to San Diego uh, for the holidays for a couple of weeks. Back to the wife and the house and the dogs and all yeah. of that stuff. It's been away for like three years man it's it's rough but yeah do, do it for the bigger and greater cause so yeah i, I mean you're gonna be that. you're gonna be fucking retired soon so yeah yeah i will five ish and a half years five and some odd months hopefully and i'll be yeah. done and then i'll go work at lowe's get the discounts there <laughs> there you go that's a good move yeah because yeah, what are man. you mid-30s how old are you again man, don't remind me uh yeah 30 35 <laughs> about to be 36 Bro, I'm fucking 38, you're older than bro. Me. Yeah. yeah, you old. You old. I'm old you as look hell. good. You look good for 38. Thanks, man. It's, yeah. again, the camera. I'm using filters and shit like that. So, um, Nice face angles. That's right. Uh, but, yeah, dude, no, I, I <laughs> wanted to just shoot the shit with you a little bit. Um, yeah. Mainly because, like, most of my, I don't even have time. I'm kind of, like, I'm behind on a lot of podcast episodes. I got to edit them and stuff like that. But, yeah, this is always good just to kind of have some back catalog. And um, it's a fun oh, yeah. way to stay connected. You know? No, definitely. I mean, you got a lot going on, man. You got a brand new baby, all that stuff, a business, and so yeah, I get it. I get it. The I mean, even yeah, even this uh, this chick right before I came in, right before I started recording, my wife, mm -hmm. she Brenda, she goes. Uh, <laughs> so Cammy does like she's starting to really like coo a lot and do like these, oh. ah, yeah. like that type of stuff. So yeah. she hasn't really talked yet. She probably won't for a few more months, but mm -hmm. she's she's doing like just in the last couple of days some crazy adorable things. A little bit like, more and more, and you're like, oh Yeah. Like you can't even set her down because it's like cuteness overload. You don't even want to leave. And of course we both oh. work from home, so it's hard as hell to get work done. Yeah. So right before I record, um, I go in there, I take a I take a leak, I come out and I hear like Almost like a Super Mario as I'm wearing my. You're just like running in there. Like, yeah, I had to run and look at it. And then Brenda's like kind of like a little misty. And she goes, Oh my God, she's being so cute right now. And I go, Because I took the early shift and I'm like, Yeah, she was like that this morning. She's like, I want another. I go, The fuck you do? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I go, I, Of course, you know, it's <laughs> if she wants to do it, her body, her choice, obviously. Um, yeah. Do that so I don't get canceled. But at the end of the day, it's like, Whoa. <laughs> girls not even four months old let's yeah, yeah let's, let's wait till we get past the terrible twos and then yes. college and we'll think <laughs> then we'll think yeah when we actually if we have any money left in 18 years we'll we'll think about it that's uh, the big it, inflation. <laughs> yeah you know because inflation world war three all that stuff um but it is kind of weird though because i don't uh i don't have a strong desire um but i also do like it's this weird debate that I'm having with myself constantly because you know I'm 38 yeah. she's mid-30s so it's like 
it's high, she's high risk either way. So do we yeah. want one? Do we? And then I'm also every time I have that conversation with myself, I'm like, you know, fuck it, dude. I'm 38. I remember when my dad was 38 and my mom was 38. Like they did not have, they didn't do half the shit that I did. Maybe my dad because he's a hard worker, but like yeah. most of 40 year olds I know are like on their way out. Yeah, you know, I feel like way. I'm just getting started. Yeah. So I guess that you know what I mean. Like the 40s are kind of like the new 30s. I feel like. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, we're living longer, longevity wise, all that stuff, and so right. we're not in that kind of like constraint that we used to be of like, oh, you have to settle down, have kids at 22, and then start this and that and that da That's but right. Now we're like able to kind of just kind of prolong the process a little bit, but yeah. Exactly. I don't um, want kids at 55 where I'm like going into the, the retirement home and like, cause we're just going to college. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. want that. Yeah. You don't, you definitely don't want that. And you also, you want to be able to like experience life too. Like that's the thing is like, I mean, as hard as it is to, um, just live by yourself nowadays, you factor yeah. in a kid on top of it. It's, mm-hmm. it's tough. I mean, we're, we're, she, she's not even eating food yet. And I'm realizing I'm like, this girl's taking up a lot of time, a lot of money, and she's not yep. into solid food. She doesn't even know what Disney is yet. Like when she starts figuring all this stuff out, we got a problem. Yeah, <laughs> you get, get hobbies and everything else. You're like, oh, yeah. okay, here we go. After you school activities, gymnastics and- or NASCAR. I don't know where she's going, or if she wants to be a doctor, an astronaut, a teacher. <laughs> you're like, that's a lot, dude. You're like, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. but it's it, it's great though. I mean, the pros are outweighing the cons for sure. I just. uh yeah, it's it's okay. been it's been awesome. Yeah, I can I can tell. I'm watching your your stories and stuff, and it's just it's it's great seeing from afar right now. Where I'm like, I get to live through you guys vicariously a little bit, and I'm like, all right, that's awesome. And yeah, man. And it's, it's seeing like it flourish and seeing you guys from the beginning to now, and it's just it's just awesome, man. I'm I proud you guys. Happy for you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely been a journey for sure. So I'm happy we're. Yeah. We're in it and we're starting to oh, yeah. uh, enjoy it and everything. So <laughs> I, I have realized um, a lot of my friends, uh, some of which we, we know, uh, <laughs> though we're name, remain nameless, but uh, I remember as, you know, they were having kids, they were like, you know, hey, listen, man, you know, it's, uh, you're not going to be able to do shit. Like, you know, this is, it's a new life now for the next whatever. And yeah. I go, okay. You know, we're homebodies. It's all good. I'm not worried. Yeah. But now they get, I mean, we've, nothing's really changed. It's another like, mouth to feed. That's it. Yeah. And, you know, even still, that's, you know, my wife's boobs now. So it's, it's perfect. I mean, yeah. we're, good to go. we're like, hey, here you go. What are, what are we doing? <laughs> There's not really a whole lot um, that's changed. I mean, we still stay at home. I, I would say the only thing that has changed drastically is we are less on our phones now. Which is good. This is a good thing. I That's mean, a good thing. I think the other thing too is probably just more time management and like kind of lack of sleep and more commitment and sacrifice for the child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, if you really care enough, what you guys do, it's just, it's really not. It's just kind of just switching up the schedule just a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. Cause there's I mean, really not, everyone says like, oh, you can't do anything. You can't go out. I mean, I'm not going to take her to the movies. Yeah. But, you know, we went to, you You probably saw, we went to SeaWorld, we've been at the zoo. Yeah. Like, you know, we're not going to not do things because we have a child now. The fact that people say that is just hysterical, you know, especially when yeah. you, uh, when you actually have a kid and you realize that it, it is hard. No question. Yeah. It's very difficult. You're not sleeping a lot. But in terms of like day to day, I would say it makes you more responsible. And, you know, it, it, it really <coughs> makes you think, like you said, time management, you really start thinking like, what am I really doing with my time? And is it, yeah. you know, is it worth it? You know? Yeah. And I mean, it's just, you guys figuring out what you can do. Yeah. You may not be able to go to the movies, but Hey, we'll, we'll go to SeaWorld now, but it's just, right. you kind of make different choices instead of lack of choice. Exactly. hundred percent. Yeah. So, but it's been great. I, I got, I got no complaints. Good man. Do you, do you have a strong desire? You and the wife to. No, not right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this weather is changing up here, and allergies are killing me, man. It's gone like 70, 60, then it's gone down to like 24, and then now it's back up to like 56. So I'm 
just doing this. I'm like, can I just get some kind of consistency with this? Ugh, that sucks. And it's yeah. probably going to be like but, that for a while, huh? Yeah, probably the next month, and then probably on Christmas time it'll level out and get super cold, and then March it'll get like warmer. Nice. But going back to what you were saying, um, we, I don't know. I mean, we kind of like, we kind of joke about it and kind of poke each other about it. Like, oh, that'd be cool. Like, you'd be a great mother. I'd be a great dad, all that jazz. But me sure. being stationed away, uh, it's kind of really hard a little bit. I don't get to see her very much. And then she also said she'd kill me if I got her pregnant during football season and I'm gone. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I don't, I don't want to fire a Latina throwing a chonkla at me when I'm gone. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to avoid that at all costs. It's hard to do, but yeah. you try to avoid it. Um, yeah, so once I get back, we'll figure things out and, and see and go from there. Um we're both kind of like set in what we're where we're at and what we're doing with goals. So I mean, it's no right. rush for kids, but we're also not for it, not opposed to it. If it happens, it happens. But then if yeah. we really want one, we could potentially like adopt or something too. So it's just it's not yeah. off the table, but it's not really on the front burner. Yeah, that's a good move. That's a good way to do it. I mean, it wasn't like yeah. that for us for a while, and then you know she was like, "Hey, you ready?" And I was like, "Well, are you ever ready?" But I yeah. guess. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, ready. we went through that whole IVF thing. That was a nightmare, but I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. That was gnarly. Yeah. But no, like, I don't, I, you did that. I was like, oh, yeah, dude. It's like it's gambling, like, man. I couldn't do that. Huh? It's exactly what it's like. Gambling. <laughs> Ugh. But, um, so what are you doing on your, on your free time? Are you able to like do uh, shit up there? I mean, and yeah. All right. Um, um so yeah. yeah so what I, are you doing? Right now, um, I'm an avid hiker. I love hiking. Yes. But July, and the competition out, out here. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was the one you just posted. I saw that. Yeah, I did that in July, but I popped okay. my hamstring on a 320-pound stone. Oh. Yeah, so, so that kind of so, a little while. Yeah, so lighter than most. Yeah, a little bit. I was just I'm trying to work <laughs> up there. Trying to work up to your weight, man. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's crazy, bro. Yikes. Yeah. How, how you recovering? Uh, I'm good. It's still a little bit sore. Um, getting back in the gym, doing therapy, all that stuff. I'm back up to like 300-ish pounds on the deadlift, so it's it's getting better. Nice. But I'm still kind of like leery of it. Um, but I haven't done like crazy hikes this year, okay. but normally I do. And then right now... <clears throat> um, I'm actually training, hopefully, for an invite to the All Navy Bowling Team. Oh, cool! That's a big deal. Yeah. That's, yeah. Is that so televised or no? That... No, no, no. Not that they I don't know, of, but I don't okay. know. Uh, yeah. yeah, that I'm not quite sure, but I know that the invitation should be sent out shortly in the next week if I get invited mm -hmm. to go try out for it, and then I'll figure out if I made it. So nice. You a good bowler, are you? Uh, I was, I mean, I'm better getting better, but yeah, I'm trying to get back up, back up to where I used to be. I stopped when I joined the military pretty much and yeah. picked it back up. And now I'm averaging around like two fifteen, two twenty. 20. Okay. Yeah. What's the yeah. max there? 300. Is that the best? 300. Yeah. I don't, no one has a 300 average. I mean, I wish, right. you know, it okay. wouldn't be fun if you did. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, at that point they got to remake rules. Yeah, so it's just hopefully, hopefully I get there and got to get some new equipment because I don't have anything. So it's just like trying to rebuild from the ground up. So just yeah. hopefully I get that invite. Yeah, any type of injury like that will really fuck with you, no? Yeah, it messes with you mentally. Like I took probably yeah. like two months, two months off and it just got me into a, a bad like mental. I'm like, eh, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to. And everything I was walking was just limping. Everything hurt, and but got to get out of that mindset and can't get can't dig too deep down. And so that's where I'm back up on the up uphill now, and trying to get back to the top and hopefully compete next year. Nice, dude. Yeah, good for you. You'll get there. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, when I had my surgery, uh, my lung surgery. That was yeah. kind of the yeah. similar thing where it was like mentally it it fucks with you. Yeah, Big just. Time. It's not fun at all man it's just you just you question everything you do and why are you here what's life about what do i provide and yeah i'm just I'm just a body now yeah for real 
I'm just an organic piece of matter. My meat popsicle. So. Yeah. And uh, it is even more crazy that uh, when you do have those, like I get why people fall into a depressive state. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of people think <clears throat> depression isn't a thing. Um, yeah. You're confusing it with sadness. Sadness yeah. is like, eh, that's an emotion. It's it's mm-hmm. like um, it's like being happy. Being happy is is great, but typically our pursuit of happiness is based off pleasure. So yeah. pleasure really is the catalyst for everything. Happy mm-hmm. is the effect of that pleasure, right? Like yeah. you, you could talk to hundreds of people that make tons of money and have everything they could possibly want, and they're miserable. Yep. So money doesn't necessarily make you happy. So happy is a again, it's a a, a thing we kind of made up. Very mm. similar to to sadness, but depression. That's a thing, though, because yeah. that's like an uncontrollable. Um, I didn't take any medication for it or anything like that. But man, when it, when you're down in that hole, it's like I get why people question whether or not they want to be here. Yeah, I really, it's, I really it's, do. It's crazy. It's a rough one. It's just like yeah, you don't know why. You don't know any of that. It's just you're just sitting there. It's not even you're sad. You don't feel emotion. Right. You're just blah to everything and yeah. nothing seems like it'll help you get out of it and That's right. even if you do like say you like online shopping or do something it's that quick like high like oh cool i did this and then it's, it's over and then you're still back in that square one of just sitting there not enjoying anything like yeah. i didn't want to hike i didn't want to lift i didn't want to do anything i barely wanted to play video games i was just kind of like mm. yeah but get yeah. out of it man it's just, it's just you're stronger than it. You, yeah. You can get, if you let it eat you alive and beat you up, then yeah, that's when you get down that dark, dark spiral. Yeah. What helped you get out of it? Was it just constantly pushing at it or? Uh, pushing at it. And then I have a great support system, like my wife and all that. And she was helping me and checking on me a lot. And it didn't help that now I'm stationed away from her. So my support system isn't directly here. So it's me and my, my apartment by right. myself so kind of like I have her from a distance pushing me and then she's trying to compete right now in her powerlifting stuff so seeing Shut her up, yeah she, she's killing it. we'll go back to that but she's killing yeah. it um yeah. but seeing her do that making me really proud and I didn't want to upset her disappoint her and all yeah. and like turn disappoint myself and I was like that's not the type of person I am I don't quit I don't give up so yeah. I was just like I need to get my head out of this and start from ground zero square one rebuild come back stronger and better and no that's doubt. that's that's what i have to do and it's still a slow process right now like i'm still kind of like eh, in the head yeah. with it where i don't know but i'm more like 80 20 now on it right. so it's more than not so i'm i'm okay with the process yeah that's good yeah, yeah it definitely takes a lot of time i mean i still find myself kind of going in and out of it too because i lost so much weight after that because i yeah. couldn't work out for like six months and I'm going on almost 18 months now of, of, uh, since the surgery. And it was like, you know, it was almost, you think about it and no matter what you deal with at the time, and it was kind of like twofold for you, it sounds like, as well as for me. So you had the yeah. surgery, you you're recovering, but also you got this wife just like yeah. I did. I had, to, I had a wife, but you know, unfortunately um, her father, Frank passed away literally like the day I got out of the hospital. Yeah. And remember that. that was rough. And it was yeah. even more, it was even more rough because I, you know, I was like trying to like fucking put on this face. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's the little facade like, of everything's okay. And yeah. And she's, you know, she's like, you okay? Like, yeah. I was like, don't worry. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Meanwhile, I'm like, bah! you know, just dying. Die, like, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, she was great and, you know, powered through and, um, it's just, it's when you have that support system, it's great. Cause we were kind of supporting each other, but also too, we were, we weren't really, um, she wasn't really grieving fully. I don't think. Yeah. And then I wasn't grieving as well, not just yeah. for her, but also, you know, for the surgery because it, I wasn't allowing myself to kind of dip into it. Mm-hmm. So like after I started recovering and, and things started calming down, I found myself like starting to finally kind of like grieve over it. 
process um, everything. Yeah, and process it and soak it all in. Because also, too, that same fucking month, I got let go from my job. <laughs> so, yeah, you you had the, the trifecta of shit. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> rough. And again, that was like, just kind of made me laugh because I was like, whatever, now I'm just going to fucking do my own thing. Yeah. Um, which I thought about doing when I was at Monster, but then I'm like, eh, I want to support family, all that shit. And then, you know, this happened. I'm like, fuck every company in the world. <laughs> like, I went on yeah. this fucking binge of like, yeah. yeah, fuck this. There is no stability. Go fuck yourself, corporate America. And I've made so many videos and podcasts about it where it's like, now I have to because... You can't go back. <laughs> I can't go back because I've talked shit about every corporation. So it's like, yeah. I gotta do it. But yeah, whatever, yeah, it's, right? keeping, I mean, it's keeping my head up against the wall. That's, yeah, you're that's doing nice. well, though. I mean, yeah. you're, you're flourishing, man. I mean, yeah. if, I think if we're still stuck to that corporate America bullshit, I don't think you'd be yeah. as successful as you are now in free reign and doing everything. And Yeah, and I definitely wouldn't be able to do what I do with the, with the kid now. I mean, that alone is worth it to me because, you know, even today, I mean, I took care of her pretty much all morning. You know, I'm making videos in between. When she freaks out, I just press pause and, you know, continue yeah. on later. Um, but I'm spending almost every, literally almost every second. I mean, this will be the most time I think when I do a podcast is the most time I don't spend with her. Cause those are hours, sometimes two hours I'll do a podcast, but that's the yeah. most time. So think about that. Like for the average human being, if you're going to corporate nine to five and you mm -hmm. have a kid, you probably drop off the kid at daycare. If both you guys are working, right. You yep. have a partner. And then not only are you spending two, three, sometimes 400 bucks a week, five days a week. So you're paying a stranger to watch yeah. your newborn leading all the way up to what? Like pretty much freshman year of high school. Yeah. You know, because I mean, they're in school from if you're doing childcare all the way to K, to kindergarten, and then K mm. through six and then six through eight. I mean, they're, they're with someone else every single minute yeah. of every. So the fact that we're yeah, spending what, maybe eight hours, like if yeah. that a day, a child. Yeah. And that's if they're not doing homework and you're doing your work if you bring your work home and or everyone's on their fucking devices now so it's like when they do get home and you got a teenager i'm sure they're playing on their ipad or whatever right oh, yeah. so yeah so 100%. these these to me are like so important these years so even if i make the sacrifice of 20 grand a year of not making it who cares getting that you know? back tenfold with memories and experiences and fuck yeah molding the child but you are like kind of yeah teaching them that we're we're here we're with you that's the right. entirety we'll see that yeah i i mean i can't imagine dropping again i've had friends still that drop their kids off at child care now there's anything wrong with that i get it work stressful and you got to do what you got to do but yeah. i don't know my attitude would be if i i do work a corporate job similar to like healthcare mm -hmm. to me me dropping off my child a fucks with my head yeah. mentally, right? I'm not able to spend time with my child. Mm. It hurts physically in my pocket because I'm spending so yep. much money. That in turn is going to stress me out. Yep. So if I work for a corporation, I think either with my insurance or an extra per diem, I should get a certain amount of money back for childcare. That should be worked into my salary. Definitely negotiate right? or something. Just yeah. Should, because should do all I mean, that, that should fucking be included because we're just in a world now to where you have to pay me more to go to your office and leave my child for six to eight hours as well as not spending time with the kid. So that long-term effects, let's not even talk about that because that's a big deal. But yeah. now financially, it's a burden. So now I'm bringing stress home to my marriage. That's a yep. problem. So there is yep. like a rippling effect of all this shit just for me showing up at your shitty corporate job versus yeah, you don't even like. Yeah. Versus I could literally be a um secret shopper at Target making thirty dollars an hour. That I do yeah. from home. You buy products, they ship it to your house, you review it, and then sometimes you go to stores and and you do like a a fake shopping. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can take your kid with you, put him in the little buggy and go do that. Yeah. You work for yourself, 1099. You're a contractor. Life, life experiences for the child, bringing them out, exposing them, and then you're getting paid to do it. It's a win-win. And, and you get to go to Target. Come on. So, yeah. again, I look at it like there's there's just so much opportunity now. Um, yeah. And I've said this before, but we're in a very interesting age because we're the same age. Uh, we're going to pretend we are. Okay, I'm not older. Yeah. But no, we're, no. <laughs> we're in a very cool 
age with the internet and the way it's peaking with AI and all this yeah. stuff where this is like, I look at the internet as the new American dream. Yeah. So back when like our families, our grandfathers came from Italy and yeah. they're crossing over to New York, Staten Island, they're, they're hanging out Ellis Island, whatever. Yeah. And similar to how our grandparents came from other countries, landed in this country, made this country what it is through shoe stands, fucking steel bakeries, steelwork, mills, like all the oil, like all the stuff that they were doing for us for the past mm -hmm. hundred years, automotive industry, like all that innovation they've created has led us to this point to where now we don't need that anymore. Yeah. A lot of people are still stuck in this like mentality of brick and mortar, work hard, nine to five. No, you don't need to do that anymore. With this generation is not lazy. A lot of people think like millennials and Gen Zs are lazy. We're not lazy. We just have it better. We're able to work from home more. We're able to make yeah. more. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, parallel to that, there's inflation like never before. Houses are more expensive. Gas is more expensive. All that stuff is true. But unfortunately, this is supply and demand, right? Like the, the reason why gas is so expensive is because, well, A, we have a lot of people up top that don't know what the fuck they're doing. But aside from that, it's supply and demand. People keep buying houses. People keep buying yeah. iPhones. We're buying this stuff. So companies are going to raise the price. Yeah, that's just how it I is. Mean, you but know, I mean, they're they're almost to an extent pricing everyone out though too. That's the crappy yeah. part. And it's just like yeah. some people can't afford it, and but right. the other side is a lot of people look for the government assistance to afford these lavish things, and then that just kind of just keeps doing this ping pong effect back and forth. Yeah. Of well, we're gonna raise this because we're providing this, and then it's just it's it's yeah. never ending. Yeah, the point you know, we're gonna crack. Yeah, and then you factor in like every American thinks they're owed something. So there's that entitlement yeah. of, you know, I need this. I need, no. You know, you don't. You can't, don't, don't get it. Like, you don't yeah. need this, or people expect the $22, $25 an hour. Right. No, no offense to hard workers, or whatever, everywhere, but if McDonald's is a minimum wage job, it's a starting job, unless you're like the managers or owners. Sorry, yeah. you shouldn't be getting paid to 22. You should be getting paid a living wage to help at right. least, but it shouldn't be an actual like full-on career living to support a family of four or whatever. Like yeah. it's a stepping stone. I worked yeah. at the fast food, I guess, quote unquote fast food. I started at Chuck E. Cheese right. and started at like $6 an hour. I didn't expect to provide for a family at $6 an hour. And I That's knew right. that, but a lot of people, they want that $22, $25 an hour. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. But, I just but, but then also, you know, the the argument there I think is, well, twenty years ago, well, twenty five now probably, twenty five years ago when you were working at Chuck E. Cheese and when I was working at Regal Cinema, we were getting paid yeah. six seven dollars an hour, but houses weren't fucking six hundred thousand dollars. Yes, you true. Know, gas wasn't four dollars a gallon. Like that's, yeah. and we I think as a nation we try to. Hmm, quote unquote, try to raise things accordingly. Yeah. Um, but then you look at everything and we don't have to talk about this because your position, but it's just my opinion is you look at everything that's going on with Ukraine, Israel, all the amount of money that we're printing literally to give to mm -hmm. other countries. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, how long has it taken us to clean up Chicago, to clean up San Francisco? The answer is, it's still not cleaned up, but yeah. we're spending billions overseas. And I get the reasoning. I get the politics. I get that we're, yeah. we're the world savior, whatever. But yeah. my attitude is with that whole situation. And again, you don't have to comment if you don't need to, but <laughs> the, the, I know you probably can't, but the, my attitude with this whole thing is like, if I'm broke, I'm not going to give my friend money. Yeah. Right. Because he needs it. So to me, it's like, America, we're broke, bro. Like, yeah, it's the spot for innovation. Yeah, it's the greatest opportunity in the world. We're the free world, all that bullshit. But we got some problems. Just like, yeah. you know, Italy's not the greatest place in the world, right? It's I, I get their government and they're corrupt and they still got the mafia down in Sicily. Like, they got their problems. Yeah. However, they just passed a law saying that no artificial food 
can be sold in Italy. I just I just read that, and they're like, we're not doing that. So then you look at it like, how much money are they losing? I'll give you the answer. Billions of dollars. Billions. Yeah. There's no fast food chains that are going to open up in Italy, but they that would make them a lot of money, right? Because companies mm-hmm. would pay to be in Italy. But they say, yeah. fuck you, because they care in that aspect more about their citizens. Now, yeah. in other parts of the government, they suck at. But there's certain aspects of every country that's beneficial, and the fact that we don't admit it as Americans, especially on the top level, that we got some opportunities that we need to work on, it's just... It's fascinating. It's so funny to me. Like we yeah. give seven hundred dollars to people in Hawaii that fucking got destroyed by the wildfires, but mm-hmm. we're giving eighty billion to Ukraine. Like, what are we doing? Some of the stuff that they do doesn't make sense. And well, I mean, that's all about that one. But I know with yeah. the, like Europe, EU, all that stuff, they they like ban the dyes. They ban a lot of stuff. We yeah. have prevalent in a lot of our foods and this yeah. and that. I mean, America's on, I mean, expansion and making money, right? But at what at what cost? And and it's like going back to the the minimum wage stuff. Like by no means do I want to downplay anyone working their ass off hard to do that. But I can't expect you, or you can't expect to make a, a lot of money on minimum wage job. Like, right. it, it's like bust your ass. Like, do yeah. what you got to do. Like, expand, get a better job. Yeah. Or for management that's why it's called minimum wage yes it's the bare minimum (laughs) of it and it's and i feel bad for some people and some people can't get out of that and that sucks and i wish we had better options for it but that's just the world we live in because the almighty dollar reigns supreme and people above us way above us are just trickling pennies while we're throwing up hundred dollar bills to them because we're working for them like yeah that's right and you know uh it's it's also like going back to like our parents and our grandparents, they did work two, three jobs to make yes. money. But um, I think the challenge for me, at least if I was 20 would be, it's just the addictive life that mm-hmm. technology has created. I think where people don't want to work hard, not because they don't have the ability to, or they don't have the, um, the space to, the bandwidth, like people can. Mm. Problem is though, when you get off work, it's pretty good. Like you can sit at home and play video games with the dude in China drinking whiskey in your underwear. Yeah. Like, why would I fucking work another job when that existed? Like my Yeah. Like our parents probably are always like, you know, when I was a kid, we worked three jobs and we did and all that's true, but they had nothing else to do. No, we had played like, kickball. Like a field, that's about the best thing you had. Yeah, dude. Like there's so like I could spend, and again, I don't do it anymore because now I have a kid. But dude, yeah. you and I used to just play video <laughs> games for hours. Yeah, and thank you, I miss COVID. It. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> and dude, man, I miss it, dude, because it was so fun and so pointless. Um, yeah, and I I could Didn't literally do that. Yeah, I could do that for hours, and I, and we did for days. Yeah, and. You know, it's hard to to not do that when you have the free. And also, too, if you really get good, you can actually make a living and be a streamer yeah. online or compete in e games where you can make millions of dollars being a, a a professional video gamer. So, like our parents telling us that, remember back then, don't play video games. It's pointless. Yeah. Eh. Rot your brain. Eh, could be a millionaire. Could be a millionaire. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's like that. It's, a, it's just a catch twenty two with it, where it's like I don't want to work, but I have fun doing this. But if I do this, I could potentially, and so you can only get better if you keep practicing. So it's like, yeah, yeah. When when are you gonna get good enough to get paid for it? But how long is it gonna take? And so yeah. it's just you gotta kind of figure figure that out. It's a balancing game, and you're like, well, yeah. I know I'm not good enough to make millions. Uh, maybe right. our commentary is, but our skill play is not. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we could definitely be commentators. I think. Uh, yeah, skill no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> I get def- shit. On. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely not me. You, you better than I. But um, oh, yeah, there's <laughs> <laughs> especially now. Uh, I haven't played in in shit. You, you almost a year. Almost think, a year. Like, it's yeah, Call it's of Duty wise. Like, I mean, like last thing months. we left off was Batman. A great game. 
do miss that too. That was that was a good game. Yeah. Um yeah, but it, it's also that that pointless kind of like mindless addicting activities that we have uh in our age group and it's hard. But then you also like look at it like YOLO, right? Like you want to live your life. Some people want to go out and they want to party and get blackout drunk at a nightclub and spend money on Taylor Swift concerts. Like yeah. for some people, that's, you know, that's what you want to do. And that's how you want to spend your time. It's all great. You do what you do. Welcome to America. Yeah. But it's also one of those things that as you get older, I think, especially for me, and this podcast has helped a lot, starting to realize like what you want to do long term that really makes you mm. happy. Because all the things that we're talking about here, the Swifties, playing video yeah. games, all the stuff we're talking about, that's that short term pleasure. Yeah. The long term pleasure is like, starting a family, um, traveling the world with your spouse, yeah. um, you know, uh, living a long, healthy life, uh, getting a house paid off, white picket fence, blue shutters, swing on the tree, like all that stuff is long-term stuff. Some golden retriever running around the iron. <laughs> <laughs> right. So as you get older, I think you start thinking about how to get to that point. And for me, it was, I needed a career that I was excited about. So when it came to content creation, which is what I do now, I did that kind of part time when I was working my other jobs. Yeah. So I, I did work a little extra for free. That was See, a passion though. So that, that was it a, wasn't work. Exactly. That's a passion. And that's kind of the, the point I think is if you can find something that you're really passionate about, maybe it is video games. You yeah. have to do it for free. Additionally, or laterally rather, working yeah. a job so that way you can pursue your passion, have fun in the process, get good enough to where you can monetize it. But, yeah. You know, it's going to take it's going to take a lot of time. Oh, so. definitely. Like right now it's like I had that decision years ago if, mm -hmm. if am I going to stay in? Like I love law enforcement, I love weapons, I love all that stuff, tactics, yeah. like you already know me. Yeah. Um but I was like, do I want to stay? Do I want to get out? I don't know if this is for me and I just kind of weighed the benefits and everything and yeah. About my 10, 11 year mark is when I decided I was like, I love what I do, but I need to think about the future. And I think with the Navy, mm -hmm. that was a good stepping stone for my future to get the retirement. I was already over halfway, halfway ish um, to get the pension, to get the, the, the disability, all that stuff. And then I can focus on my other passion and stuff. And I'm thinking about potentially starting a security company because I'm just seeing it around in Seattle, uh, San Diego, all that stuff. It's just, I'm watching those guys there, the rent -a cops I'm like, this is absolutely hard. Yeah. Like, I yeah. think if I can get and get down and dial in everything, what I want, I feel like I could make a wave and at least be somewhat successful in that and starting up my own company of, of the sorts and just be happy with that. Yeah. That's a great idea. Especially in, those, as long as you uh, plan on staying in progressive states, because that's what you fucking like to do, you stay there. Yeah. You'll have you'll have private security. Yeah. You'll be able to expand like a motherfucker because they got no yeah, cops, I'm, so it's perfect. No, they got shit. I'm like yeah, I'm here. Here we go. Like I got vests. I got everything, and just won't be back to Florida. I'm sorry. I love you, but yeah, did we're the Florida thing. Yeah, but at least now we got, I we got cops to go here. in Florida. You have a place to go in California. It works out. That's perfect. Yeah, it works well. <laughs> And occasionally you'll come down here for these stupid theme parks and stuff. And yes, oh no, definitely when yeah. uh, the, all the theme parks and yeah, or maybe I'll just go work at the theme parks again. I don't know. I guess. I might be too old. I might be too old to walk stilts again. But <laughs> oh, dude, no, that sounds like a blast though. Oh, it was it was, it was fun, but and I bet they no. uh, they probably make good money, right? Twenty thirty bucks an hour, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like minimum. And then if you did private events and. Stuff yeah. like that. They bumped it up and you get hired out by private companies. And I remember one gig. Benefits, like, all that stuff too. Yeah. Three, yeah. it was like $300 an hour on a, on a, uh, a party thing that they had us. And it was like three days. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like 18, 19. I was like, I have this kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like Peter yeah. Griffin with a donut. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. There's another funny thing too that, uh, that I didn't realize like as I get older is when you do make, you do have those big nuts. Now I do it because I, I own a company. So anytime like it's a big paycheck, yeah, I'm like my 20 year old self would be like, and spit yeah. everywhere. 
But now I'm like, I need to put that aside for my my daughter's fucking future. <laughs> like, so it's yeah. it's if I did that, I think at 20 instead of partying and doing drugs and doing the stupid stuff I did, I'd yeah. be in a better situation. But you know. It's it's experiences. I've done stupid things. I will yes. not put that on on here. Um, yes, yes, yes. Done stupid things in the past. But Maybe you have. Who, who I put, knows? I won't. I don't regret it because it's mm. made me who I am today. And I feel like maybe mm. if I chose a different path or different decisions, I could be somewhere else. I could not be in the military. I could be dead. I could not have mm. met my wife, all yeah. that stuff. So it just, it's like the flash, like you don't mess with the timeline. So right. yeah, that's I'm not going to do, do that. But now yeah. I'm just kind of more like I get a bonus or something. I'm like, all right, let me spend a little bit to like kind of, give myself a gift or my wife a gift and then everything else gets put aside. And it's mainly for like house upgrades and stuff like yeah. that. Like you're an adult now. I'm like, well, I need a, need a new washer. I need turf. Yeah. We just did turf and front rock and all that stuff. On the, Ooh, nice. All right. Resale value, man, California. I don't have to worry about water and pay those bastards. Yeah. No shit. Ugh. Yeah. Shit's expensive. Like one month is like four or $500. If you try to water your lawn. That's insane. Yeah. Florida, you just wait for it to rain every half hour. Yeah. I, I turn off my sprinklers. I only go once a week in the dry season, which is like three weeks a year. Yeah. No, it was yeah. like once every other day. And then I was out there with a hose yeah. doing this and it just, it still died. Yeah. We even have uh, in Hillsborough County where I'm at, we even have, there's only certain days. I mean, most parts in Florida, uh, but there's only certain days you can water. Like they restrict you from actually watering your plants or not wow. plants. You're, it restricts you from watering your grass. Like yeah. you're like my area, you're only allowed to water Tuesdays and Fridays, certain okay. times of year. Because okay. if you water too much, you're wasting water when we don't need it. So yeah. we again, don't have water, so we can't right. do it. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys do not produce water from the no, air. We don't yeah. Barely produce anything. Yes, there is no precipitation. Good. The one investment I think would be rad is have you looked into those rain tanks? I, I have, but I don't know if we it rains enough. But I also have to check about the like the jurisdiction and laws. And how works, yeah, yeah. You know how California is. We're like, well, if it benefits you, mm, mm -hmm. we need five percent. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I did think about it, and then once I actually get back there, I'll do a little bit more research and yeah, figure yeah, I got it out a, with some be light and stuff. Yeah, I got a buddy um that used to live in the desert, and mm -hmm. you know, bare it would barely rain, obviously. But anytime it would rain and he needed water, it was actually, it wasn't for watering plants or grass. It was just literally to do everything else. Yeah. So he would have this filtration system. He would just take the rainwater and it filters out the leaves and the gunk. And then he would have to boil it, sterilize it and reverse osmosis. He did all this crazy yeah. stuff, but you're in the desert. What else are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, um, who cares? But Free imagine water. like, because eventually, who knows, we all might have to do that one day. Yeah. Luckily I have a prepping book. I have all that stuff. I know what to do. I'm yes. just like, I need to do it right now. Yes. If there's an apocalypse. Probably. I know exactly what to do. Yes. I'm, I'm good. I can, I can make a fire. I can filter my own water and I can live underground. I'm fine with that. Yeah. What else do you need? <laughs> You're good. Except in Florida, we got issues living underground. We can't, we can't do oh, you that. Got yeah. You got Florida you, man all over. Yeah. Well, you, but your problem is here you dig and you know, you're in the ocean. It's like six feet yeah. and it's all wet. You guys are sinking and sinking. <laughs> yeah. I would love to, I always see these videos of like these companies that do these down um, or like uh, these storage container uh, oh, yeah. bunkers like, uh, underground. Yeah, That looks that sick. Be, that would, that, that would be sick. fuck. You don't yeah, have to worry about sick. air conditioning or any of that because it's cold. Yep. yep. But you guys would just have to worry about flooding. Um. Correct. Yeah. You would literally just... Yeah, you'd be screwed. Yeah, like even with the pools, perfect. even when you build a pool here, you got to be careful because you can't go so deep. Yeah, that's yeah. just crazy. Like, yeah. Florida was fun. I miss it. It was like miss visiting, but I'm yeah. glad like I had the opportunity to go with different states and different countries and get out of out of that and be like, all right, this is all different. But yeah. I don't think I'll retire in California though. I think it'll be like my house will be a rental and then we'll go somewhere with foliage and real seasons and yeah. stuff. But it all depends on, on Brie and depending on what, where her job takes her. Cause I retire in five years. So right. I really don't have to worry about too much. It's just, 
it's her and figure out the dates for certifications and stuff like that. Yeah, dude. No, it'd uh, it'd be cool to have you back on the East Coast, but you know, I get it. You guys come West Coast. I mean, I I used to go. I used to go out to California all the time, and it's just. Yeah, it's a little. You get used to. I mean, where we live, it's it's pretty nice. It's not like crazy laws, crazy crazy left, crazy right. It's yeah, pretty in the middle, chill. Because we're in a beach town, so right. Yeah, everyone's super chill. But then once you start going towards L.A. or like San, San Diego, Fran. Mexico area, it's like then you get the far yeah. right, far left, all those crazy rules. But yeah, that's it's it, been it's been fun there. It's it's nice. Yeah, it's funny how California, because it's so big, it's like yeah. each major city has its own like rules. Like it's different in San Diego than it is in L.A. Yeah, it's so fascinating. It's you get. It's its own like country, pretty much. Yeah. You have all like NorCal and growing, growing, or not even growing up, living there. Southern California is still like Los Angeles, right? Yeah, so like NorCal, San Francisco, and I'm like, what? But San Diego, and they're like, yeah, well, that's SoCal. Yeah. I was like, well, what about Los Angeles? Like, that's still kind of SoCal. I'm like, yeah, oh. like I don't know. It's like, it makes it's, no but it's two and a half hours from me, and it's still yeah. Southern. Yeah, it's fucking it's crazy. crazy. It's and yet, state. and yet, Texas seems to be able to figure it out. A big state, and they just they do it. Yeah, they don't have they they're allowed to have guns, so that's why it's that's true. Easier. Yeah, California, you can. I'm like, Ugh. yeah. If anybody says it's stupid, uh, <laughs> they'll do really okay. Yeah, what? Well, yeah pretty, pretty much. <laughs> I but yeah. I would rather drive up and down California like I did getting up here than mm-hmm. I would across Texas. That sucks. Texas yeah. is just garbage driving across. It's like yeah. a day. Yeah. I had to do that. I had to drive my mom from Florida to uh, Arizona when she moved. Uh, and yeah. it, I felt like it took like a day to get from Florida, you know, to pass Georgia, Louisiana, all that. And then once we get Texas. Yeah. Then once you land in Texas, it was like five days. I feel like it took us to drive yeah. from one side to the other. It was so crazy big. It, it's the same thing. You know, those like, like twirly video screens when we, like it has a kid and it just did the car and it drove past that like rotating screen. That's what it felt like. And I'm like, exactly. is everything going to change? I was like, Oh, we're going uphill. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's about it. Are you going to ever have new scenery? Yeah. yeah there's no, Oh, there's another Bucky's. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> right. I do love me a good Bucky's though. I do. Bucky's is amazing. I, when we stopped there, I was like, this is, they did this that. is good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're opening up a couple here in Florida. So, yeah, Man. pretty tight. They don't have that here. But we have In N Out, and it is overrated, but it is delicious. I wouldn't know. It's it's very good. It's overrated. It, Steak and Shake is still top. Steak and oh, Shake of course. is yeah. the, the number one. Yeah, like, anybody no one who says, even though I don't eat meat anymore, and I could easily judge a burger because not a lot's changed. But the yeah. debate is always like five guys, Steak and Shake, In N Out, you know, uh, all that. Steak and Shake. There's it's yeah. hands down Steak and Shake. A a double or a triple steak burger, fucking American it. cheese in between that with their fries, uh, and then and shake. oh, dude, and a shake with it. Oh, and uh, it was all it. And, type two. I'm hungry. Yeah, <laughs> and all that is like three dollars, by the way. Yeah, it's a double double here, and it's like eighteen fifty, and yeah, cheese, like, and then they charge a twenty five percent tax on top of that. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's an alcohol tax in Washington. It's like ten percent, something like that. Jesus. On it's top like of the want, sales, it's like they don't want people to have a good time. No, not at all. It's yes, and Seattle's turning into like like a World War Three area. It's just so many fentanyl people up here. It's, oh, I heard it's yeah, crazy. crazy. Portland, Portland's a third world. Portland is a yeah. third world. It's, yeah. Well, didn't they just uh, go back on? Because they legalized all drugs. Yeah, and I think they just went back on it. Yeah, it was Portland. Yeah, yeah they went back and said, ooh, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, it was. I drove through, and it was just like, it, yeah. I had my bulletproof vest on and everything. Really? It's like that? Yeah. Yeah, I was just, no, because people were just, you're sitting in traffic, and people come up and shoot you or whatever. Try to steal your car. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. That's nuts, bro. 
yeah so i was just like mm, let me put this on real quick yeah i mean dude i'm a big i'm a big believer in legalizing drugs because i think it's gonna it's gonna take away from the cartel and 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 illegal drugs and but also yeah. too it's the problem is with that situation the idea makes sense on paper yeah the problem is if you tell every 15 year old that they could drink alcohol why don't you just make the legal age 15 yeah. well the issue is when things are legal more often than not people like to do them when they're yeah. illegal they like to do them even more yeah. so people are still going to do them problem is you won't be able to control it either way because yeah. whether you legalize it or not legalize it it's just so easy to get things down the problem is just people are just bad they're just bad people so whether it's legal yeah. or not legal it's, it's going to be bad the only thing you can true to you know the only thing you can do i think to get get rid of the cartel and all that stuff is you got to do something with the border and you got to fucking do something with a lot of other issues we got like giving police more money and fucking hire more police, giving them tactical training. Yeah. Like you got to fucking police this country because I got yeah. one of my neighbors actually, um, had an overdose, an accidental overdose of fentanyl. And he, ha he had it because and he's a kid. He's like 16 years old, but his dad's actually a cop. Okay. So, but the accidental overdose was apparently, someone gave him like, you know, a sleeping pill. He was like, you know, he couldn't go to sleep, he had insomnia. So he was like, hey man, can I just get a sleeping pill? You know, he had to like yeah. have a, a long shift or some shit and he needed to rest up. So like one of his good friends takes these sleeping pills and they both happen to take them. One was fucking laced Wait. with fentanyl. The other one wasn't. It's just, it's one of those freak yeah. things that just happened to yeah. this kid. And he yeah, almost, right. yeah, he almost toasted out. And that's the thing is like, you Legal or not, you know, doesn't matter. Yeah. Shit's getting out yeah. there. It's people are just bad, man. And you also uh, get you get the people that if you say it's legal, just like how they have it with weed or whatever, they're gonna drive with them. They're like, Well, I bought it at the store and I can I like, well, yeah, you can buy it, you can take it home, you just can't use it while driving. Yeah. Operating and so it just doesn't things don't click for people very well. Yeah, yeah common sense. With drugs. Like it's just I mean do look sense at, is down the yeah, I mean, look at alcohol. It's the greatest example of how we fucked up society is because it's the most dangerous thing that we have on the planet, in my opinion. And and by dangerous, I mean it's going to kill you eventually. Yeah. It ruins your family. as a trickling effect. It's super addicting. You can't even, like, if you're on heroin... You can go to the hospital, they'll get you off heroin in a couple of days. Yeah. You're on alcohol and you are addicted to alcohol, like your body's addicted. The withdrawals are way worse. You, oh, they yeah. have to literally drip you and withdraw you slowly from alcohol or else you'll die. Yeah. If you have if you're an alcoholic. So that right there is horrible, right? For yourself. But then also you look at the amount of drunk drivers that kill people yep. on a daily yeah. basis. It's like and that thing is, and it's legal and it's all legal. And not only is it legal, but every yeah. celebrity on the planet has their That's own fucking problem. booze. Yeah. Yeah. So then I want to buy that because I want to be like the rock. So I need to drink his tequila. It's like, dude, that's a problem. That's something you got to look at. And I love drinking. I miss it. I'm, 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 I'm a year sober. I'm, I'm, I'm a year sober. Man. Thanks, bro. So, but I got to tell you. I'm sober, mean, but I've, I've dropped down a lot. Yeah. And it shows. I mean, it makes a difference, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel a lot yeah. better. And like I noticed, like if I had like two or three drinks, like I just felt hot. I felt eh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now I just like I'll have a whiskey here and there. I'll have some meat or something when I'm out. A beer. Sure. But I really don't have more than two. Like I don't need it. Yeah. To have a good time, but I like it because I just I enjoy it. Yeah. But I know moderation now, and I don't. Yeah. Like I have a whole full stocked whiskey bar and everything. My wife made me for Christmas last year. Nice. Fully stocked, light, lit up everything, but like I just go home. I'll have a glass here and there, but I'm not right. downing them like yeah. everybody. And it's made a huge difference. Like I feel a lot better and no I doubt. can sleep. But. Right? Yeah, that's a big thing. But you know, it's just so funny how I mean that's a great example of something that's legal for a certain age group 
and it kills a lot of people. So, yeah. you know, what are we doing here? So what? Let's uh, let's legalize freaking heroin and shrooms and weed and all that. Okay, sure. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it'll be better, but it could be worse. And then once it's like Portland, then you got a problem. Yeah, it's just this. <laughs> now we're going to now you got a whole you got a whole freaking lost of us city in this country yeah. that's you know stuck in this fucking like I am legend but drugs yes <laughs> pretty much what that is but, yeah. yeah and everyone is fucking dosed up with uh, everything there was even one um, it was in Portland what was the drug they called it um, where it's the zombie drug have you heard of that was it it wasn't the bath salts was it I think it was like bath salts and like fentanyl. <laughs> Okay, because I remember that one was like Miami, the bath salts, where the guy like turned into like a zombie, started biting and eating people. Yeah, literally, like it's, but, yeah, people could look it, it up. Was a it's mix- like, it was a mixture of something, yeah, and it's they call it yeah. the zombie cocktail, the zombie drink, or I don't know. Yes, no, I, I remember that, but I can't remember what it was. And yeah, it's like, that's terrifying. It's like how do you how do you stop that? Like I'm gonna shoot you. I'm sorry. Yes. Like, like yeah. that's it. Like how, how you stop that is you do how you stop that is you do exactly what Will Smith did. Is you you hunker down, you get yourself a nice dog, and you get ready for war, bro. That's that's yes. exactly what you do. Yeah, that's what I would do. I'm like, we're we're, we're at it now. Yeah. But. Well, anyway, <laughs> on that lighthearted note, um, <laughs> <laughs> I just realized we're at an hour already, bud. Oh, shit. All right. Well, yeah, time flies. Well, it's been huh? too long, so I mean, it just goes forever, man. Yeah, yeah. No, we, I could talk for you forever. Um. Oh yes. So, uh, anything else you wanted to talk about? No, man. Just not that we really cap- covered. We just, yeah, I was going to say, we didn't really. We went know. everywhere. I don't yes. even know. Who knows? I feel like I need a cigarette after this of how many things we hit. <laughs> yes. I need a cigarette and some whiskey and some uh, some zombie cocktails. Yeah, zombie cocktails. I'm going at it tonight. I live in Seattle, so we're good. <laughs> hey, you. We'll just get off the street. But where can people find you? What do you got going on? Uh, I'll, uh, leave all the, I'll leave all the stuff in the description as well for people listening. Okay. But yeah. Cool. Uh, what do you got? You can find me at Norseman underscore of underscore nature on nice. uh, Insta Googles. So <laughs> you can do that. Uh, I do a lot of the posts with my drone, all that stuff, outdoors, a lot of bowling now, some lifting. Nice. And uh, pretty much right now, I'm just trying to compete for the bowling and get back into strong, man. That's my goal right now. I'm to transfer to my new command. That's awesome. Pretty bro. much get back to the family. That's. I like it, man. Well, listen, Ant, you're a hard worker, bro. Uh, respect to you. It. Thank you for what you do. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. It's my pleasure. And, Thank you um, for what you do. You bring joy to the world. <laughs> you bring super amounts of joy and some crazy shit you talk about, man. Keep it yes. up. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. And All hopefully right, uh, we could do this in person soon. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, maybe you have to come out this way to Halloween Horror Nights. Ooh, I might do that. Oh, oh! Did I just spark something? That could be fun. Ooh, I've got a place in California to stay. Ooh, I like that even better. Yeah. Can, can I use your Tesla too? I don't have it anymore. <gasps> I had to get rid of it. Why? Because I couldn't charge it here on base and oh. with the snow thing. Oh. So, but but I'm trying to get rid of my car now to get a Tesla to go back to California. So that's what we're working on. Cybertruck. No, that thing's disgusting. Come on, dude. That's like the Halo Tumblr, bro. No, it looks like a f- horrible rendered fucking warthog. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. I'm getting it. I don't give a shit. I'm, oh my God. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot it. I'm gonna shoot try it. to. Try to. I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, Tone. This was fun, man. All right, bud. I'll catch yeah. you later.